Okay, this is practice paper two of paper I. So we're allowed a calculator for this one. Okay, question one wants us straightforward round to four significant figures. I'm just going to make this a bit bigger. So four significant figures. My method is I go one, I get my pen, and I go one, two, three, four. They are the numbers that are staying. So one, one, five, and then I decide about the seven. The next number is an eight, which means that seven will go up to an eight. And then all these other digits have to become zeros for the place value. So I've got three zeros, three zeros, three zeros. That is my answer to four significant figures. Okay, that's question one. Okay, there's two ways to do this one. We can do it using a draw and we can do it using numbers. I'm going to use it, do it, yeah, do it using numbers first. Please remember any vector can be written like this, where your first number is where you're, is what you're travelling left and right, and the second number is what you're travelling up and down. So vector S is, from start to finish, from here to the bottom, would be a long 7 and then down 4. Vector T from start to finish would be back 2 and then up 3. So S plus T would be 7 minus 4 plus minus 2, 3. 7 take away 2 is 5, minus 4 plus 3 is minus 1. Okay, so that is what S plus T is. If I was going to draw this, I'm just going to draw these again over here. So S would be um, a long 7 down 4, so S would be this one. So this would be S, following that arrow. T would then be added on to there and be this. So that's me drawing T. S plus T would then be the vector that joins the two of them. Now, it would be going in that direction, okay? Because following the path S, T brings you, is this your start, is this one's your start point, this one's your finish point. And as a vector, if you look at that, from, from your start point to your end point, my two green dots, you're going along five down one. Well, my answer did say along five down one. So there's two ways of doing that question. Question three um, is a quadratic formula. Now, the only bit of information is you've been given a coordinate like this. In my rule in maths is whenever we give you a coordinate, we give you a value of x and y. So all I'm going to do is sub these in. So I've got the equation negative x squared. Remember, it's negative because it's a sad face. I replace y with a k and I replace x with minus 3. Right, minus 3 all squared is 9 and there's a minus in front. So k is minus 9. If they asked you for the equation, which they sometimes do, you would then have to write that that was minus, x, minus 9x squared. But they've only really asked you for k. Okay, this is, we have a capsule, or a, medis, a medicine capsule, and we have to find the total volume. So first thing is identifying what shapes have we got going on here. We have a cylinder in the middle. So a cylinder is volume equals just pi r squared h. And then we've got two hemispheres, but two hemispheres put together make a full sphere. So we've got these two formulas to use. Now, oh, this one, I remember my class did this one. It was really tricky to get the numbers right. From here to here and here to here, 23 take away 15 is 8, so each of these wee bits must be 4. Now that means that the radius here is 4, but that also means that the radius there is 4. So the radius of both shapes is 4. So for the cylinder, you've got pi times 4 squared times. Now the height of the cylinder, remember the cylinder has been turned on its side. This is the height here we're after, so it's times 15. Okay? For this hemisphere, we're doing 4 thirds times pi times also a radius of 4 cubed. Right, I'll go get both of those answers. And that's your two answers there. So the last thing to do is your total volume. So the total volume is where you add the two of them together. And you will get 1022.06 cubic millimetres. And that's just the two decimal places. There's no mention of rounding, so that would be your final answer for that one. Places that I know people go wrong with that one is the height, getting the height of the cylinder wrong, writing down the formula wrong, the radius wrong, so just be extra vigilant, okay? 
Okay, question five is a vector. So the first thing to point out is this is a cube, right? So this is along two, back two, up two. It says Q is the midpoint of the, is that the back face? Yeah, so CBFG is the back face. It wants the midpoint of that. And it also wants the midpoint of G. I'm going to do Q first though, because I've already got my head around that. So Q, remember, if you don't know which order to go, follow the alphabet. It goes X, Y, Z. So you're a long number, is a long two. Then it goes back two. Oh no, my long number isn't two. Hold on, hold on. I'm only going halfway along, so my a long number is one. Sorry, so it goes along to one. It then goes back to, then it only goes halfway up, so it goes up one. G is up in this back corner, so it doesn't go along anything, but it does go back to, and then it does go up to. And luckily, that's all they ask you about that one. Question six, um, express in its simplest form. So a bit of bod mass. Bod mass means you do this power bit first, so you have to do that there. Now, y cubed to power minus two, that uses the rule that if you have a power raised to power, you then just multiply them. So we times the 3 and the minus 2 together. So this gives us y to the power 8 times y to the negative 6. And then when you're multiplying, you add the power. So 8 add minus 6 is just 2. So the final answer is y squared. Okay, question 7. We have a line with the equation 2x plus y equals 6. Find the gradient of this line. So you have to rearrange this to be uh, y equals. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to take that x over and write it as minus x plus 6. And then I'm going to divide everything by 2. Remember, there's a secret 1 in front of the x. So that gives you minus 1 half x plus 3. So there is my equation of the line. So the gradient is the bit in front. So the gradient is minus a half. And then it says find the coordinates to the point where this line crosses the y-axis. It's just a fancy way of asking for your, your y-intercept. Y-intercept is your end number, so it's at 0, 3. Question six, oh, the famous dog collar question. Right, so what we've got going on here is we have a big sector and we have a wee sector cut out. So our method is get the big sector, get the wee sector and then take them away. Both sectors have an angle of 160 though. And it tells us that the radius of O to A, so the radius of the little one is 18 and the radius, of, sorry, the radius of the little one is 10. That's a mistake. So the radius of the little one is 10 and the radius of the big one, O to C, is 18. So you're literally going to do um, sector 1, take away sector 2. So area for a sector is angle over 360 times pi r squared, because area is pi r squared. So from that we have to do the same sum twice but with a different radius. So for the big one, we'll do 160, so we'll just call it volume area one, is 160 over 360 times pi times 18 squared. Area two is going to be 160 over 360 times pi times 10 squared. I'm going to get both those answers. So that's the two answers to two decimal places. So the shaded area is area one take away area two, so subtracting those two answers gives you 312.76 centimetres squared. And I'm just saying that that was to two decimal places because it's not exact. Okay. Question nine, show that this equation in your roots. So first thing I have to do is get that into the standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. So let's multiply this out. So that gives me 5x minus 2x squared equals 7. Oh, I'm going to take the 2x squared over to this side because I don't like it where it is. I don't like it being negative. So I've got 2x squared. The 5 is going to come over as well. So minus 5x. 7 is already positive. So I've got that. So a is 2, b is minus 5, and c is 7. Right, I have to show that this is no real roots. So that's how I know to use discriminant. So no real roots means my answer should be negative. So b squared minus 4ac is minus 5 squared, which is 25. Take away 4 times 2 times 7, which is 25. Take away 56, which is, oh my goodness, minus 31. 
So because b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, there are no real roots. And that's the conclusion you have to write for that one. You just can't relieve it as minus 31, okay? Question 10 wants the size of angle QPR. So it wants that angle in there. It tells us that the area of the thing is 12. So we start with area equals half AB sine C. I know my area is 12. So half of my two sides. Don't know if sine C, so I'll leave it as sine C. Then I'm going to do a wee bit of tidying up. So I know 12 equals a half of 5 times 6 is 15. Then do 12 divided by 15 equals sine C. And if I do shift sine of 12 divided by 15, my acute angle is 53 degrees. But remember, they wanted the obtuse angle. So remember, in all sine tan cost equations, if you've done these... There are two answers for sine. There is your acute answer of 53, and there is the other one where it's obtuse. So where angle C is 180, take away 53, which is 127. So if ever asked for the obtuse angle, it's literally just taken away from 180. But if you've been taught all sine tan cost questions already, that should be okay. Question 11 is a missing angle one. A quick read of the information tells us that there is no tangents and there is no diameters. So there are no right angle triangles here. Oh, no, there's no right angle triangles at all. So the only thing that's going to be happening in this one is some radiuses. So radius, radius. There's my wee isosceles triangle. Um, they want, sorry, I need to read the question. Calculate the length of A to C. So they want this. Okay, so I'm going to find some missing angles first of all. So 98, 180 take away 98 leaves me with 82. 180 take away 82 is 98. 98 half to make these two in here both 49. Mm. Oh, this is on a straight line. So 180 take away 49 is 151. Mm. So I've got some information now. I think I'm going to zoom back out a bit and read what else. I didn't actually read the whole question. It tells us that uh, D to C is 9 centimetres. So this is nine centimetres. The radius of the circle is seven. Right, I'm going to draw this triangle out again. So basically, what I've got is I've got this triangle that's really badly drawn. Right, I've got this triangle here, right? This is C, this is A, and this is D. My angle is 151. This is nine. A to D is the diameter, so if the radius is seven, then that's 14. And then I want this. It's a cosy corner, two sides and an angle in between. So x squared equals 14 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 14 times 9 times cos of your angle, so cos 51, which gives you 497.40, blah, 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 blah. But remember, we then square root that, and I square root the exact answer, so it's all on my calculator still. And it gives us 22.30, I'm just going to leave it as 3, 22.3 centimetres. So that was a wee twist of angles and a bit of trig put together. Question 12, we have a right angle triangle. We have to find to calculate the value of x. Right, Pythagoras. Right angle triangle is always Pythagoras. Mr Pythagoras says that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So we're going to do the exact same. So you've got x plus a, so all squared equals, I'm going to put the b first though because that's got the bracket in it. So x plus 7 all squared plus x squared. So there's your starting point. Square both of these brackets. Remember that's the same as x plus a written out twice. And that's x plus 7 written out twice. So you need to multiply out those brackets, giving you x squared plus 8x and 8x goes to 16x plus 64. You might need to take an extra line of working in there. 7x and 7x is 14x and 49 plus x squared. Question is where do you want to go from there? I'm very quickly going to tidy that up a wee bit. So I've got x squared plus 16x plus 64 is 2x squared plus 14x plus 9. 
49. Question is, do I want to take everything to the left or everything to the right? I'm going to take everything to the right purely because that's where the biggest x squared is. So I have got 2x squared take away x squared leaves me with x squared. I've got 14 take away 16, which gives me minus 2x. And then I've got 49 take away 64, which gives me minus 15. And that all equals zero. So it doesn't matter which side my zero goes on. So it goes to there. Now, the asked us to find x. So this is a wee weird lead into quadratic equation. We're looking for two values that multiply to 15, multiply to minus 15 and add to minus 2. So it's something to do with a 3 and a 5. It's going to have to be 3 take away 5. If you then solve each of those, so you have x plus 3 equals 0. That gives you x is minus 3. And x minus 5 is 0. That gives you x equals 5. Now bear in mind that x was a length. x can't be minus 3, right? So we just write that that one's not possible. You can't have a negative length. So x equals 5. That's what they wanted for that one. Okay, question 13 or 15. 13. This, I just know from this diagram, I've seen that much. So this is your double sign rule question. We have to find the height of the building. First thing we're going to do is we're going to fill in loads of missing angles, right? So angles, um, we have a straight line here. 180 take away 55 is 125. Up in the top corner, um, this one is 145 away from 100. So that's 35. And then that wee skinny looking one, if you add the 125 and the 38 together, it gives you 163, making this wee top skinny one 17, okay? Right, so that's me got all my bits of information on the diagram. It says calculate the height of the building, so this is what we're after. First thing you're going to do though is you have to either work out this side here or this side here whether you want to use the X or the Y. I'm going to use the one that I've called Y, I think. So I'm going to look and focus at this, just a skinny looking triangle just now, right? With the one, two, five, the five, the 38, oops, the 17. And this is going to be my unknown and I'm going to keep it as Y. That's what I'm going to work out. Now it's sine rule. So sine rule would be that over that. So it would be Y over sine 38 equals my 5 over sine 17. Bring up the sine 38, so that would give me 5 sine 38 is sine 17. Uh, and if I work that out, I hope I didn't just go too fast there, because I, I don't bother writing out the sine rule. Sine rule um, is always a series of being able to know that you're kind of doing like a Okay, there's like a cross, so I always show my class this cross. So it's always that over that and that over that. So that's what you're using. So the one, two, five is absolutely nothing to do with it. So answer that, that gives us is 10.53. Now I'm going to focus on this little right angle triangle. So I've just worked out that this is 10.53. This is 55. This is 90. This is 35. Now, technically, you can use Sokatoa, but from years of marking experience, I've seemed to notice everyone just does double sign rule now. So, using my double sign rule, I can do x over the 55. So, I've got x over sine 55. And my 10.53 all over sine 90. I'm going to bring that, that sine 55 up. So, I've got 10.53 sine 55 all over sine 90. Now, I'm not actually using the 10.53. I'm using the exact answer that's still sitting on my calculator here. And that gives me an answer of 8.62 metres. Now, don't worry if you use the 10.53. It's fine. They're not penalise you for rounding at that last wee stage there as well. But yeah, notice that that style, of, that design of question is always going to be double sign rule. The other option was, though... Is if I'd taken my skinny triangle, is I could have worked out this side here. And then when it came to use my second triangle, my second triangle would have been that one. With an angle of 38. Um, an angle of 38 in it. But then I wouldn't have had 
yeah, I could have used that one with my answer and my angles, but I'd, I'd just always go for the inside one. Okay, question 14. Due to threat of global warming, scientists recommended that emissions greenhouse should be reduced by 50% by the year 2050, so 40 years' time. The government decided to reduce the emissions of greenhouse gases by 15% every 10 years, starting in the year 2010. Will the, recomm will the scientists' recommendations have been achieved by 2050? Notice, first off, hold on, there is absolutely no details about the number of emissions here. Let's pretend we did with the number of emissions. If we were going to reduce something by 15%, what would we use? Well, you would do 100, take away 15 is 85%. And 85% as a decimal would be 0 0.85. Now, it said every 10 years. So how many 10, right, so from two, 2010 to 2050 is 40 years. How many 10s is that? That's four. So we'd use the power of four. They didn't give you a starting value though. Technically, you don't need a starting value. If you just type in 0 0.85 to the power of 4 in your calculator, this gives you 0 0.5220625, right? So that means that at the end, there's going to be roughly 52% of the gases left. They were aiming to reduce by 50. We've not quite made it. If you don't like that though, pick a number, right? Make your initial value something. It doesn't matter what you choose. So let's make the initial value 200, right? If your initial value is 200, what are you aiming for to half it? You're aiming for 100, yeah? So if I do 0 0.85 to the power of 4 times 200, let's see what this gives us. 0 0.85 to the power of 4 times 200 gives us 104.40. So if my initial value of um, emissions was 200, if I reduce it by what they're aiming to do, 15%, it's going to be reduced to 104. They've not quite made 50%. They haven't. Okay, they've only really made about 47%. So the, the, the trick with this question is a lot of people in the exam that year said, oh, can't do this. They've not given us an initial value. But... You don't actually need an initial value, not when they're asking, basically, are they going to be able to reduce it by a half? It's your conclusion. So the conclusion is, will it have been achieved? So I'm going to say not achieved, as it's only reduced by... So if we've got, remember this number here, that's technically 52.2%. That means that it's only been reduced by 47.8%. You could have also said that, oh, it's not quite made it to 50% because I've used the values 200, which meant I was aiming for 100 and we didn't get to 100, we were still greater than that. So you could have then said, oh, if this example, you could have said 104 was greater than 100, but you could have done a made up value, but you didn't technically have to. Anyway, that was a strong of a question that year. Okay, and the last one is about depth of water in a harbour. So this formula tells you the depth of water, H is the number of hours after midnight. So we want the depth at 5 a.m. So 5 a.m. is when H is 5, because that's only 5 hours after midnight. So our depth is 3 plus 1.75 times sine 30 times 5 is 150. So if we type this into our calculator, it gives you... 3.875. So the depth of the water is that. That's part A. Part B, calculate the maximum difference in depth of the water in the harbour. Do not use trial improvement. Right, I need you to think of the sine graph that this is representing. This is a sine graph of 1.75 that has been shunted up. So the maximum of that graph would have been 1.75 and the minimum of that graph would have been minus 1.75. And I've shunted it up 3, so that's 4.75. And I've shunted that one up 3, which is 1.25. So the maximum depth of the water is 4.75. The minimum depth of the water is 1.25. The difference is the difference between these two numbers, which is a difference of 3.5 metres. 
Now, he technically didn't even need to deal with the plus three bit. The difference is just, like, the... Oh, sorry. The difference is just this. From the top of your sign graph to your bottom of your sign graph, which is 1.75 up, 1.7 down. Double of 1.75 is 3.5. I prefer, though, to show you that method, just in case the question asked... Instead, what was the minimum depth of the harbour or what was the maximum depth of the harbour and then get the difference from there. Just so I'm covering all styles of questions. Okay, that's me. Thank you.